In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the geometry of the universe. This is another way to think about the density of the universe, to figure out the density of the universe, which is the question that we're constantly trying to answer if we want to know what the fate of the universe is. So one way we can get um, an answer to the density of the universe is to find the mass, like I said in the last lecture. And what we did when we found the mass and divided by the volume of the universe, we got something that was much, much less than the critical density. And um, so that would mean that the universe was going to expand forever, that we were probably in a coasting sort of universe. But you can imagine that there's a lot of difficulty with doing that. I mean, it would be very easy to miss some of the mass. You're basically working on the basis of statistics, and statistics are not always going to turn out to be right. So you want to have other methods to test it against. And Einstein gives us another way to do this. Um, which has to do with the shape of space itself. Again, I'm thinking of space in terms of geometry um, like a big giant coordinate system. Don't think of space as outer space. Think of um, a big giant coordinate system. And you should remember from when we talked about black holes that mass bends space. So if mass bends space, that actually has the effect of changing the rules of geometry. If you think about the geometry that you learned in ninth grade or 10th grade, whenever you took geometry, what you learned was what we would call a flat geometry or a Euclidean geometry. Euclidean is named for Euclid. He's the guy who came up with all the rules that you learned. And there were a bunch of theorems that you learned. For instance, you learned that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. You're very, very familiar with that. But it turns out that that only works if you're working on a perfectly flat surface, like this one. If this triangle, clearly the angles would add up to 180. But what if you are working on the surface of a sphere, like the Earth, for instance, like you can imagine these are latitude and longitude lines. The rules of geometry are actually different here. If you draw a triangle by connecting three points, you can actually see this angle is pretty big, and if you do that for two other angles, you're going to add up to more than 180 degrees. So the rules of geometry are different. You also have parallel lines of longitude that actually meet. Parallel lines can meet on the surface of a sphere. Or you can carve it in another way. This is called a saddle. And um, on a saddle, the angles of a triangle add up to less than 180. And although the parallel lines don't meet, they change their distances from each other. So in some places, the parallel lines are close together. And in other places, the parallel lines are far apart. Those rules of geometry, the theorems that you learned, are totally different for a sphere and for a saddle. And you can actually go through and derive whole new sets of theorems for spheres and for saddles. And you can take classes in college where you do that. I took one. And by studying the arrangements of objects in space, you can study the geometry of the universe itself. And when astronomers did that, they found that the geometry of the universe is basically Euclidean. It's flat. It's what we are used to, which is kind of nice because the math is a lot easier than doing the math for these guys. If it had been a sphere, we would have been in a recollapsing universe. In a coasting universe, it would be sort of a saddle shape. But that's not what we got. We got this flat geometry, and that is the case only for a critical universe where the density is equal to the critical density. So let's go back to this chart that we sort of started in the last lecture. We filled in the first three columns, but now let's add in a column for the geometry. In a recollapsing or closed universe, the geometry is spherical. In a critical universe, where the density is equal to the critical density, the geometry is flat. For a coasting or open universe, the geometry is like what you would have on a saddle. And it turns out for accelerating universes, you can end up with anything because um, the unknown force that causes the acceleration messes up any kinds of observations we might do. So it could actually end up being anything in that situation.
So what does our evidence tell us? Well, we don't have any evidence in favor of the recollapsing universe. The density is not greater than the critical density and the geometry is not spherical. So there's no evidence that we live in a recollapsing universe. It's very unlikely that that's the case. We know that the geometry appears to be flat. We've studied the geometry and it is flat, so that suggests that we live in a critical universe where we will eventually expand to a stop. But the density of the universe turns out to be less than the critical density. So that would suggest we live in a coasting or an open universe. And we'll come back to what observations show acceleration in two lectures from now. But at a certain point in the early 1990s, we didn't have these observations yet. So nobody was even thinking about accelerating at that point because then you would have to have some sort of unknown force that causes the acceleration. We don't know what that is. So just to sort of sum up where we were in the early 1990s, the observations of the density showed a lower than critical value and the geometry suggested a critical universe. This is contradictory. We have a contradiction between our two results. They don't go together. You can't combine these two results unless you have an accelerating universe because in accelerating you can have any density and any geometry. But those two things just don't go together. Something's got to be wrong or we've got to be in an accelerating universe. But in the early 1990s, nobody was thinking accelerating. That's ridiculous because it would imply that there's something we don't know about physics. There's this unknown force that's causing the acceleration. We don't know what that force is. We have no clue what it could be. There's no reason to think that it exists. And there wasn't any direct observational evidence for it. All we had was the fact that an accelerating universe could have any density and any geometry, which this is the case, um, but there wasn't any direct thing that would prove that there was this thing wrong with physics, that there's this weird force that we don't know about. And we're pretty reluctant to say something as radical as there's something wrong with our understanding of physics unless we have really, really, really good solid observational evidence. So the position we were in in the early 1990s was difficult. We had a contradiction and the only possible resolution to the contradiction didn't have any evidence in favor of it. So we started looking at what we might be doing wrong with the density and the geometry. And that's going to take us into our next two lectures.